Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruk Momohobe. Um, welcome to yet another wonderful episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom uh, podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our podcast. There's a little red button there, please press it. And I have an exciting guest. Um, her name is Hannah Lecha. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mohobe, for awarding me this opportunity. It is, a, it is a great pleasure to have you. I've been trying to get your husband to come on, but you, you seem to have come on behalf of the family. Would you like to share your background? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, my name is Hannah Lecha. I am a transformational uh, coach uh, and a leadership coach, an entrepreneur and a speaker, uh, actually a serial entrepreneur. Mm. And, uh, but uh, before all of those titles, I am actually a human being. I mm. am uh, a mother to two beautiful girls, mm. uh, aged uh, 18 and 13. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm also a wife for the past, how many years? I think it's 23, okay. 23 years. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Um, now, as an entrepreneur, it's not something that you, you know, you were born into, you, you walked. Can you tell us how you became entrepreneurial in terms of your journey? Thank you very much for that question. Uh, that's exactly, it's, it's true. Uh, I am actually, I am a biologist, uh, a botanist to be precise, by training. I hold a, a, a BSc in ecology and an MSc in botany. Mm -hmm. And then later on, uh, with a passion for, with a passion for property, I secured a certificate in real estate. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, my path was the conventional path, the traditional one that I think everyone went through, where we were told, go to school, uh, get a degree, get a job. And that's what happened for me. I found myself uh, into uh, the science industry just because I did uh, very well at that time. Mm -hmm. And government was in a drive to get people into the science discipline. Mm -hmm. So I literally, we literally had no you know, no space to choose what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of just uh, channeled uh, into science from high school to uh, pre-entry science course and then into BSc. Mm. And then I, I did well. Uh, I, I graduated with a, with a 2-1 uh, in oh, my first okay. degree. That's nice. And the University of Sonata recruited me as a staff development fellow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you see how I didn't even choose. So it was just a staff, an SDF post. Mm. And they decided they wanted someone to fill the post as a botanist. Mm. So it means I was then now from ecology, I was channeled into botany. Yeah. So I went up to the MSc and when I came back from uh, MSc, I did my MSc in Canada uh, between 1988 and 2000. And uh, when I came back, I knew that I was due to go and do a PhD. And, but I never went that route mm. because uh, I was invited into a meeting, a business meeting, when I just came back from Canada in 2000, in August. Mm. And uh, as a science student, I think most people would relate if you are a science student. Uh, I was just so focused, you know, into sciences. Mm. And back then, our curriculum didn't allow you to do any other courses beyond science. So mm -hmm. it was just math, science, phys and science That's completely. It. That's mm. it. Mm. So all of a sudden, you know, my sister-in-law said there's a, there's a meeting, come and, mm. and join mm. and listen. So I went there. Uh, it was actually an Amway meeting. That was mm -hmm. back in 2000. Wow. So I, I joined in 2001. So we're... We are fellow uh, alumni <laughs> yes. of, alum of, of Amway. <laughs> yeah, so I, I went to that uh, business meeting and mm. uh, I, I got interested into mm. it, so I, I joined. Unfortunately, instead of really wanting to pursue the business and build it, 
I was more interested in the you know in the personal development uh, content that they had. Mm. So I started. I think they gave you a book to read a week or something like that. Yes, they mm. gave us those books to read. And mm. for me, the first book that I read was actually Think and Grow Rich. Mm. And then I read Napoleon uh, Hill. Yeah, yeah, Napoleon Hill. And then I, I read uh, Rich Dead, Poor Dead by Robert Kiyosaki. Saki, yeah. And then I read the, the, the Cash Flow Quadrant. So I started Kiyosaki. reading more of those. And mm. that, for me, mm. that was uh, the, 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 the game changer. It was transformational. Mm. And I really could connect and realize that mm -mm, I don't think uh, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. I'm getting value from uh, this work that I'm doing as a lecturer at the University of Botswana. Mm -hmm. you know, and back then, it was some sort of prestige you know, to mm. be uh, to be a faculty member. I guess member. it still is in a sense, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know because I've long been, I've been, I've been 18 years, I think, yeah. uh, since I've been uh, a lecturer. Yeah, since I've been a lecturer. So, so, so that started percolating that, you know what, I don't think I want to pursue this and go for, for, for the PhD. Mm. And I was barely two, two years into it and I was due to go and do a PhD. Mm. So I really had to make a decision to say, am I going for PhD mm. or am I jumping off this academic ladder here? Because going for a PhD came with so many ramifications. It meant I was going to go for four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then because the University of Tana was would be my sponsor, then they were going to bond me for another five years. Ten years gone right so there. So ten years gone right there. Mm. Or the alternative would be to go and then repay them. And I thought... And am I right in saying the only progression after the PhD it depends on what you write and it depends on whether you're in the good books of the administration. That is true. It mm. depends on, or even how your peers mm. look at you, how they review you. So it, mean, it means getting back to publish, to write, publish journals, and then uh, progress from one. So it's never about your individual excellence or, or effort alone. No, it's not. Mm. It's not. And back then, you, the, you know, the, 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 the remuneration structure was bar. So you reach one bar and you get stuck there. Mm. You, you have to publish and then cross another one. Mm. So, so, so really, I looked at it and I realized that, no, this is not the path that I yeah. want to go. Uh, I'm not enjoying it. And then at the same time, uh, when I started having that awareness that there is more to life than you know, <laughs> running after the, the, a job that you don't love. Mm. Uh, that's when I, I could see possibilities for my husband and I started pushing the idea that, you know what, you need to quit uh, and go start your own business. What was he doing Your then? own business. Uh, by then he worked for Mupo and Motswakole. Mm -hmm. He was an attorney there. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, he, he, he loved the idea, but as we all know, starting, jumping up and getting the support to do it. So I said, no, you can go. I will support you. I'll work for some time and support. So that's what we did. Mm. Uh, and he moved to Maung to start Le Chanda Associates. I remained for those two years because I still had to save the bond mm -hmm. for my MSc. Yeah. And at the same time, support him while he started off. So it really meant I had to jump ship. Mm -hmm. I had to jump ship. And uh, I, I, at that time, I didn't know what I really wanted to do. But I knew I didn't want to pursue uh, this academic, uh, yeah. academic path. So entrepreneurship looked like uh, the most, the easiest thing yeah. uh, that we could actually, I could actually do at that time. Yeah, let, let yeah. me just throw in a question there. Your, your sweet spot, you told me that you've discovered is, is that of human potential, you know, human potential development. Can you tell us how you moved into that area and how you identified it as a sweet spot? Okay. Uh, yeah, it is very interesting. It wasn't actually a linear straight path you know mm. that led that, that led me to that mm. but i think that's that was just my, my my path how god uh you know decided that it could be the path mm. i realized that when i started uh, when i was still at university and as, as, as a biologist I, I went into personal development and i never stopped so i kept on reading mm. i kept on reading until i I, the, I quit my job and then started uh the business I didn't start with human potential development, actually, which is why I do the work that I do. Mm. I was scattered. I tried so many things, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I tried so many things. Uh, I, I actually started, the first thing that I did, I sold airtime. You know when airtime was coming, the bulk <laughs> airtime? Mm. I had a friend who had a, a dealership with Mascom, mm -hmm. and uh, he gave me a sub-dealership. So I wasn't selling the five cooler, five cooler one, but I was recharging people who were selling, mm -hmm. you know, uh, back then we were selling it via the phone. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that I did. And then inspired by 
the laundromats in Canada that I saw, I said, okay, I want to do a laundry business. So I started a laundry business in Maung. Mm. And only um, that it was too early mm. for running a laundry business in Maung at that time. When it was cheaper to hire someone to wash your clothes. <laughs> and people were not there yet. Mm. So I packed, I took my pack, my load, my, my the machines and put it in the in the in the storeroom. <laughs> and then uh, once I had quit, I started those two while I was still working at UB. Mm. And once I had quit, uh, a friend of mine was operating a soga milling business. And when I came there without knowing exactly what I wanted to do, uh, although I knew I wanted to run a school, so I had applied for land to run a school, mm. the school that I never ran, mm. I never did, because I realized that it was at a higher level than what I thought at that time. Mm. So she was operating a soga milling plant. She had rented it out. And out in Maung. In Maung. Mm. So now the husband was, was transferred to Kaburun, so they were moving here. And she just said, no, you know, you can start, you can do this. It's easy. Can take it over. Take it over. You just buy so government, then you mill, you go and sell. Yeah. You know, something was like an easy thing to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that is, the, I jumped into that and, yeah. uh, and, and, and operated that soga milling. I think I did it for how many years? Two, three, four, up to three years. Mm. And that was the, the lending page, I think, for me, and a, a, a learning curve mm. uh, where I really now had to learn business. And I learned it the hard way because I, I didn't have any business background. So I actually joined Bokim and took a lot of uh, the trainings that they had back then. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, manager, supervisors, uh, finance for non-finance. Do they still have those? I know that now they're called Business Botswana. Do yeah, they still have they, those things yeah. available? Yeah, I think that they still do. They okay. still do. So mm -hmm. that is how I really, that's what I took to, mm -hmm. to really develop myself. And then uh, in t about 2005, the, there was a shortage of sorghum, you know, uh, in the industry, you know, yeah, in, in the, the in the country, mm -hmm. and that affected a lot of uh, a lot of millers, and mm. I could see it was coming. So because I had read, uh, you know, who moved my cheese, <laughs> I couldn't just by, by Dr. Spencer Johnson. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't just wait and see everything collapsing. So I decided, what can I do now since mm. uh, this industry is being hardly hit like this? Mm. So that's when I decided, okay. Uh, people were tendering by back then, but they didn't have shops. So I said, okay, I'm going to rent a, a shop and start uh, a retail a retail store. Mm -hmm. So actually, actually, I went into tendering first because I did stationery, mm -hmm. and I also had a space where I was selling that stationery. But then I went into the shop full mm -hmm. full time. So that is how I really found my way into entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. I started renting out uh, a shop in Mau. Uh, it was a general dealer with a butchery. And then that was 2006 when I started, and then I won quite a number of tenders. And then we had space uh, in, in, in town in Maung, a mm. space that wasn't really developed. It wasn't mm. a good location. So, and, and I want to say that when I started that shop, uh, my husband wasn't really supportive of it. <laughs> At that time? No, he wasn't. He, kept he didn't on, see the vision. He didn't see the vision. He kept on saying, you know why people are going to be stealing? Of course, they stole, mm. and of course, they steal everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so thinking about that, people are going to steal can't stop. Should you. never be a reason to Should stop. Should never be a reason. So, for for the longest time, I was running that because uh, uh, that, that that's my personality. I'm, I'm actually a disruptor. When there's the status quo, I really push against yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I love I that. I like that it. about you. Reinvention, yeah. disruption. You love those things. Yeah. So yeah. I pushed and, and ran that shop uh, on my own mm -hmm. for, for, for a substantial number of years. I think he started joining in uh, and becoming a bit interested in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I know why he was interested. Now He, he saw the results. Yeah, he saw the results. Mm. He saw the results. And I think to be exact, what really caught him was that uh, back then when BHC started selling multi-sectional title deeds, mm. I expressed my interest uh, to buy those. Mm -hmm. And that was in 2006, just when I started. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted a support letter from the bank that they could finance. So I went to the bank, FNB, and when they looked at my account, especially mm. it was even the, you know, you know how the, 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 the receptionist or the, mm. the sec secretaries would block me from seeing... Let me, let me just interrupt you. You, you. you reinvented yourself from being a lecturer mm. to being a miller mm. to being a, a supermarket owner mm. a retailer. And, and to a retailer. Mm. So you seem to be a bit of a chameleon in terms of changing colors there and repositioning yourself. Um, how did you develop those talents? I, I really, I really learned, I really learned on the go. Mm -hmm. I learned on the go. 
I think I think sometimes, like I'm saying, that we have a a a, a pretty stand path path, because I was a. Uh, I would say back then I was I was gifted academically, mm. so it meant I could learn I could learn on my own very quickly and grasp new concepts. Mm. So that really worked in my reinvention, mm. in my reinvention path. Mm -hmm. so, so 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 that's what that's what happened. So I'm just going to conclude that one about where my husband so that yes. I can do something, and then I'll jump into into that. Mm. So, so 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 then. The, you know the PA couldn't even want to, didn't even want to allow me to see the, the bank manager, mm. and I was just starting, no, not a lot of money, no name, just so. You wanted I, a loan, and you were not no, given access. No, no, I just wanted that they write that if I'm awarded the, the flats, mm. they would sponsor the flats. Yes. So eventually, I said, okay, can I see the, the bank manager? Mm -hmm. And then uh, eventually they agreed. So I went and saw Mark and told him, this is what I want. I want so they have actually given three How flats. How did you go past the PA if he was refused? She was not keen. You know, uh, one of my gifts is communication and expressing myself. So if it's finding my way through mm. communication, I'll always find my way through it. So okay. so I use that, mm. and I went in and and uh, you know, Mark just looked at my account and said, Ah, Malisha, this account can buy three flats. I said, Mark, I'm not saying I'm buying the flats now. All I want is a letter that if I am given this, fl I wanted this flat, you can mm. finance me. So mm. let's just stick mm. to mm. what I need right now. Mm. The rest we will look mm. into it yeah. uh, into it later on. Mm. So that is what we did. Uh, mm. I got that. That was 206. Nothing happened. 207. Then all of a sudden, 209, mm. I get a phone call and uh, they had actually awarded us like uh, so three flats. Mm. And uh, it went to the bank, so Mark phoned and said, you know, uh, the, the awards are here. Okay, the, when the first one came, I think Lawrence took it in his personal name, so they gave yeah. him a personal... Lawrence is your husband. Yeah, yes. my husband. They gave him a personal loan to buy that first one mm -hmm. so that they can relieve the burden from my company <laughs> because it couldn't afford to buy those uh, two flats. Mm. And then I think a month later when the other two came out, then mm. Mark said... Phone they said, and what have you That's done? It. Man, Mark is obviously the yeah, bank the manager. Yeah, the bank manager said, what have you done? I said, what? I said, I'm looking at your bank account now. And it can actually finance all these three flats. Mm. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, all these three uh, yeah, flats. I said, oh, okay, thank you. So that's what he did. So he, I took a loan. So on top of the one your husband took, you took another three? No, no, that one. So what he did is oh, he, cons two. he consolidated even the one that my husband took on his personal loan yes. and pushed it through into one loan in the account. And mm. the way that I did is, instead of taking a mortgage to buy those flats, mm. they just gave me a loan you know, through my company. Is this an overdraft? No, it was a loan. Okay, yeah. So they just gave me a loan. So it meant I a bought... An unsecured loan? Or yeah. they bonded it? Property. No, it was unsecured. Okay. Yeah. It was unsecured. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, it was unsecured. Mm. So th th because it was taken to the to my 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 retail business. Yes. So it was like a business loan. Okay. But I so then I took the cash and bought those three flats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. those three flats. So so I believe that was the aha moment that. It was a turning point. That was the turning point that my husband said, oh, this is not just a hobby. Mm. You know, this is a business. Mm. And then now he jumped in and said, okay, why not then? Because you have been renting for some years. Why can't we can just go and build a shop in one of our plots that's in town mm. and have you move to that? To that. Mm. So I moved there, I think it was 2011. Is that when you set up, Le, is it Leha? Laha. Laha. What does that stand for? What does the name mean? Laha is... L A for Lawrence and H A for Hannah. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Laha yeah. Enterprises or Laha. No, no, it's, it's, it's actually it's actually we do have Laha Hotel, we do have Laha House, mm. which is actually that property. Yes. And we had Laha Superet. So actually my my, my shop was called Laha Superet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's when I moved into our own uh, premise and I operated there for for eleven years. Mm. So for eleven years, uh, I was still operating that shop. Were you literally behind the till, working the, uh, the, the till machine? You know what? I've mm. done everything in that shop. Mm -hmm. I've done everything. I operated the till. I bought stock. I pegged. I even, I even learned how to cut meat. Mm. So I called myself a block girl because mm. I could cut 
<laughs> meet me in the butcher. Yeah, you yeah. taught yourself. Yeah, to do I that. taught myself, and then I taught even my staff, like mm. all my managers. Mm. We, we had many people who could do it because the most difficult people to manage in a butcher mm. are those people who cut meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very unreliable. So you were there for 11 years. Did you, did you quit, or what happened? Yeah, I was there for 11 years. I, I ended up uh, leasing it out mm. because uh, while, while everything on the outside looked very good, uh, I won a lot of tenders, I was making money, but deep inside, uh, there was a turmoil inside because I saw myself running after, you know, uh, making the money in this business, mm. but losing a lot of things that were special to me. Mm. And some of the things that I quit my job because I said, no, I don't want this. Mm. So I found myself falling into that same trap, you know. In other words, you felt that you were stuck to the business. It was no longer passive. It was just active, non-stop business. Yes. You got sort of stuck with it. Yeah, I got, I got stuck with it. Mm. Uh, because eventually, initially I was like doing almost all of everything in there. So it meant I woke up very early in the morning. I was there. Mm. I went home when it closed, it closed mm. at 10, and when we start clearing and then ordering, you're going to reach home around 11 or 12. That night. That night, mm. and you find your kids, the whole day you are not there, the kids, you found them sleeping, the morning you wake up, they are still sleeping, you are going. Mm. And I said, no man, I don't think this is why I quit and sacrifice my career yeah, yeah. to come and do this. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a health freak. I found my health being compromised as well, because now, I didn't even have time to exercise. I wasn't eating properly because I love to cook. I couldn't cook anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I couldn't cook anymore. And I think yeah, with the relationship, it was also going under because now I come home at <laughs> late at night. I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sleeping, waking <laughs> up and going. No time for conversation. No, no time. Let in. alone for other important things. Yes, <laughs> yeah. because you are tired. When you are stressed out, there's no time for those important things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's when I, I really had to go within and said, no, no, no. I don't think this is what I really... This is what I really so wanted. now this is another major reinvention. What happened? Now this is a major re and and the tipping point of that was actually my daughter. Mm. Uh, back then, so I ran the shop. I was a member of uh, of Bokim, which is now Business Botswana, mm. and I was actually in the committee that ran the Maung one. I think I was the deputy after John Wellio. Mm -hmm. So it means I was doing. There was the community service. I served in boards. I was running this business. So it was just. It was just non too much. Yeah. It was just too much and non-stop. Mm. And my daughter is just like me. She's, she's really expressive. So one day when I was prepared to go for the, there was a Bokim business uh, ev event. It was mm. an event and I was actually the MC. Mm. So she could see I was going. I, I opened my old rope to change clothes and uh, he asked me, he said, Mama, let me ask you because I said, why? I said, Mama, when you were young, did your mother leave you with other people like you are? Mm always leaving us with Namta. Namta was our helper back then. <laughs> That's and then, a very interesting question. And then I said, you said, leave me. My mother gave me away. I said, mm. my mother gave me away to her mother. So I was raised by my grandmother. I never lived mm. with my mother when I was, I said, mm -mm, don't try and do what your mother did to you on us. <laughs> yeah. And back then, I think she was five or six. Mm. She was five or six. Mm. So that for me, it was a turning point. It was an aha moment. That was an aha moment that, yeah, mm. things are not really working well. Mm. And that was contrary to my value systems because, because I wasn't raised, I didn't grow up with my mother. I was mm. raised by my grandparents. Mm. I went back to my mother when I was like 12 or 13. So I decided I'm going to change this pattern mm. of people, you know, having kids and giving them to other people to raise them. So I'm going to raise my kids. Mm. And because of that, I never had a relationship with my mother. So my relationship was with my grandmother, but not with my mother. So mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm going to build a relationship with my children. Mm -hmm. And which is why I actually, I had my first, my daughter when I was just, I think before I turned 30, because mm -hmm. uh, I was 29. Yeah. I was looking at the years and saying, uh, you know, the longer I take to have kids, it means I'm not going to have a relationship with my kids. Mm -hmm. The gap is going to be too wide yes. to be able to engage. So I said, okay, then I need to pause mm. and have kids mm. so that was an aha moment and i realized no i think this is not really working this is not what i had uh, envisioned my life to become mm -hmm. so i need to start doing something and i didn't know where to turn to but because i was a personal development student i think that's where 
it led me to go back to start reading. But I was reading and reading, nothing happening. <laughs> and, and Just getting stored in there. Getting stored mind. in there. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't being integrated. Not being implemented. Yeah, yeah. which is why I value transformation now. Because yeah. information alone won't take you that far. Mm. It's only when you start implementing and integrating yeah. the information in your life. They say knowledge is good, but applied knowledge is what counts. Yes. So you started now applying it. Yeah, I started mm. now uh, applying that. Mm. So that's what then led me to uh, joining uh, yeah. the John but, Maxwell but let's team. Just, let, let me just, we will go deeper with the mm. John Maxwell team, but mm. let me just ask you the transition from being an employee mm. at university to being an entrepreneur and 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 the, just the mindset involved i'm going to ask you to explain the mindset transition there and then when you got your aha moment the other mindset process can you just speak to that a little bit yeah i, th I, th I think the mindset when you are an employee really especially at, at a level where you are you are the expert you are the one doing the, the mindset there is that you get the you get you, you create your own results you know you, you do something so that you get results. Mm. And that if it doesn't, if, if it's not you, it won't get done. Mm -hmm. so, so, so for me, a large part of the mistake that I saw there is that I went there into the entrepreneurial space with my employee mindset mm -hmm. where I wanted to be, you know, operating everything, being there to see that it is done. Mm. If, if I'm not doing it, it means no one can do it better than me. Yeah, from the E to the S quadrant. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yes, from the E to the S quadrant. But interestingly, when I quit my job, because I had read uh, Rich Dead, Poor Dead, mm. I knew that I didn't want to be, to move, to be in the left quadrant. Mm. I wanted to become a business owner and an investor, mm -hmm. which is why I started by acquiring property before I even run businesses. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that if I, I had real estate and I developed property, I'm leasing it out, uh, I could generate income without having to work every day. Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned, you know, to move from the theory into the practice takes a long time. Mm. So I didn't start right there. I, I went b from E to from the, the you know the, the top from left the e to the S. from the E to the S. You got stuck in the and S. And then I got stuck in the <laughs> S. Uh, so now the challenge is moving to the B and the I. So the challenge was moving to the B from yeah to the B and, and the I. Mm. And and really so when I, I realized that I was in this in this trap, then I realized that I was stuck in the in the employee, you know, self employed mm. uh, mindset and I'm, uh, there you are still an you are still an employee but you have employed yourself. Yes. You know. Yes. And and that's when I, I decided to invest in myself and I joined the John Maxwell team. I started now learning, you know, leadership at a higher level than uh, just reading books and I started implementing What were you doing with Maxwell exactly? Uh, actually what, what they did there is that because I had just started speaking actually for me a lot of things that i did i did them f not for a living mm -hmm. for a very long time before i converted them into a living mm -hmm. yeah converted them into a living so w what happened is that I, I i just like communication was just a gift for me so i could just speak and inspire people mm -hmm. uh, but what happened when i got back to maum because after i quit at ub in 203 mm -hmm. i went to join my husband in maum because his law firm was in maum so Everything that I did then has to be in Maum, mm -hmm. which also happens to be my home village. Oh, great. It works <laughs> for you. <laughs> so, so I was at home there. Yeah. So, so I've always had this gift of, uh, you know, seeing possibilities for other people, expanding, uh, you know, possibilities, and also having compassion. So when I went back to Maum, I met a former colleague of mine who, back then he was a criminal, you know, <laughs> co-criminal. Oh, so, really? Yeah, he was a co-criminal and everything I had, he was in the newspapers and everything. So I was able to meet him in person and I just took a like and just asked him, what's, what's going on, you know, with your life? You're always in the news. What are you doing? Mm. And then he said, uh, I said, no, I think you should quit. He said, no, when have you seen a nurse quitting to be a nurse? I said, no, the nurses <laughs> retire. Yeah. As she said, yeah, but I'm not due for retirement. Mm. So, but I said, told him that, you know, but if you find yourself getting caught every time you steal, mm. then it means it's time for you to retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm. so we, we kind of then connected and every time he went back to jail, I would see the police after me. I said, what did I do wrong? Then mm. he said, no, we are sent by uh, this person <laughs> from prison. She said he needs, he doesn't have toiletry mm. or he's going for a case in Francistown. Uh, he needs some money to eat, food to eat on the way. 
So I just started doing that and I would mm. just buy him toiletry tea. I hope you also referred him to your husband for legal assistance. No, <laughs> I didn't because my husband had worked with him in the past. He didn't even want to see to oh, see his probably name. Didn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to see his name. So, okay. so he kept on saying, do you really know this guy? I said, no, I know this guy. I went to school, to school with him. Mm. So, so what happened is then I just kept on you know, supporting him and then being that container, he would come and talk even when he's out of jail. So I kept on saying, you know, I told you to stop this. Mm. So eventually when he, he realized that, no, I think I've had enough of this and he wanted, he, he was out of jail for the longest time. So he came back to me, you know, he came back to me and said, you know, that time you, you, you promised that uh, if I stop this, you can support me. Mm. And now I feel like this is it. Mm. So I said, okay, fine, do one thing for me. If you can, he said, if you can go to church at least once in a month, go with me to church once in a month, and then uh, start taking care of yourself, I'll find you a place, to, a place for you to stay, and I'll give you an allowance. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing that I asked for him. So yeah. one Sunday, I found him waiting for me at the shop so that we can go to church. Wow. So we went to church. He kept on going with me, and then started going alone, and then... He was on his own, so I kept on supporting him. But he still had a case that was outstanding. One case was outstanding. Was so haunting him. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in 2012, they called him for that case. And when they called him for that case, uh, he was actually found guilty. Oh. And uh, it means... Sentenced. No, they didn't sentence. They found you guilty, and then you, they, they, reprimand, they reprimanded him. Oh. It was December, so the case was going to be the following year. The, yeah, the following year in January, that's when they were going to now sentence him. Mm. That is the only time when my husband came in. Wow. Because uh, I was so disturbed. I had really... You're pleading for him. I was bleeding because Ple I... Bleeding. Bleeding, I mean. yeah, and bleeding because he had worked <laughs> so hard to mm. change his life. Mm. And I knew that going back to mm. jail was going to, to break him apart. Mm. And he may not even now recover out of it mm. so i that day I, I went with him to court and it was the first time i went to court wow. <laughs> i just sat there in court and when i was sitting listening i realized that no he's going under mm. and uh, so when they finished i reprimanded him so i went to the police and asked them okay can he go and get uh, his things he was on medication can you go get his medication at home and then then they tried to be funny and then they said okay let's go so we went did that and then i went home and cried like it was my own son who went to jail mm. because you've you had you had a bond with him you had bonded with him yeah i've bonded with him but i've also seen how far he had come mm -hmm. yeah i've seen how far he had come it's not easy to grow up you know being you know like w when he told me so it started like stealing like at primary small things and then it it, it went on and on. So it was, that's how his life was. Mm, mm. So that's when Lawrence saw how, you know, uh, things, head, were, going, things yeah. were going. And uh, he just said, you know what? I will do his appeal. I'll go and represent him. Mm. So what happened then is they represented him immediately in, in December of 2012. Mm. And you know, th the same time that, the day that he was sentenced at court, he used to be smoking, drinking, so he had stopped those things. Mm. But immediately after, after he was found guilty, I found him outside smoking a cigarette. Mm. That, you know, within a flesh. Back to his, yeah. yeah, within a flesh. And I just asked him, what are you doing? And he just threw it away like mm. that. Mm. So I knew that he was going to need support. So I had to find a way to get into prison. Mm. So at church, there was prison ministry. Mm -hmm. So... I joined the prison ministry <laughs> <laughs> so that I could get inside prison mm, and, and, visit him. and visit him. So I got stuck with that ministry. Mm. <laughs> so, but deep down, most people knew that, no, Hannah was just going into prison so that he can see Meta. Mm. So he was not going to prison <laughs> for, to, any, for, other for any other purpose. Mm. But what happened is the first time I went with the people who were in the prison ministry, we went to prison and because I was just then at the back, mm. they were ministering. Mm. And then the second time, they, I found myself alone. They didn't come. Mm. So you had to minister. So I had to minister. And he was there with other people. He was there with other people. So I had to minister. So mm. if I, I use my experience as a teacher mm. and my experience in personal development, mm. so that's what get me going. So I could start talking with them. Mm. And then the third time I went, they are still not there. Mm. 
Then I realized, oh, this is now going for the long haul. So, mm. so now I started now preparing. Preparing and also bringing other people, I suppose. Yeah, actually, yes, I prepared. Mm. And then I looked into my team. So within my team, there were two people, uh, there were two of my employees who knew how to sing as well. Mm. So I, I invited them so that now we could do a proper church service there. Mm. So they could leave the songs, I could minister and they lead the songs. Mm. And it's a complete service. Mm. So that's what, then I started wondering, am I really doing it well or not? And then I was following a ministry in the US, it was called Prophet State One. Mm -hmm. So it had an annual conference called She Speaks. So it was empowering women to speak and write mm -hmm. the word of God. So I decided that, you know, I want to go there. Mm. I want to go there. So to the States. To the States. Mm. So that's what I did. So 2013 in July, I saved enough money. I went mm -hmm. uh, to North Carolina in Charlotte to attend She Speaks. Mm. And everyone there was from a ministry. They were being sponsored. I was the only person who had sponsored myself to go there. Rich. So when I mm. shared why, why one lady... Uh, She's called Melissa Nixon. Mm. We were in the group. She was from Charlotte. So when they realized that I came from the, I was from far. I was mm. the farthest. Mm. She connected with me and said, "You know what? I'm from Charlotte. Mm. If you need anything, connect with me." Mm. So when I, they asked, "Why are you here?" and I just said, "No, I've been volunteering in prison, and mm. I don't really know what I'm doing there." Mm. So I decided to come and maybe learn. And you had to share your story with this guy. Yes. Obviously, to give them the full picture. To give them the full picture. Mm. And then Melissa said, but you know what? You can also do that for a living. Mm. You know, it's good that you are using your, you know, your, 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 your skills and your gifts to volunteer, but you can do it for a living. I said, no, I didn't know. He said, yes. He said, uh, the John Maxwell team can actually certify and teach you how to speak, uh, teach you other, you know, uh, leadership skills, skills yes. mm. that you can use in the business. So that's when it's, then... Mm. When I got back, then I contacted John Maxwell team and 20... They were already here in Botswana? No, they were not. Mm -hmm. It was in the U.S. Okay. So I, I, I sent an email and then I enrolled in August. So I certified in 2014, the following year. Certified as a... Yeah, certified as a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certified as a John coach. John Maxwell certified. business yeah. coach. Yeah, no, it, is, it was a... Leadership coach. Yeah, yeah, it's because most of it is leadership. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so that's what I did. And mm. at the same time, I was still running the shop. So mm -hmm. I was still running the shop. I was still doing that. But now I was implementing what I'm learning. So I started implementing. I started now be putting in systems becoming in the business. Becoming a leader. Now becoming a leader. Where you, you don't work in your business, you work on your business. Where now I work on the business. So mm. I started now empowering my team members so that they can take uh, responsibilities. They can do other things. And I started tra training them using the same leadership uh, training mm. that I was offering to um, offer to other people. I started with my team. Mm. So my team were being trained, you know, in leadership, how to, how to show up, how to communicate, how to lead. Mm. So I started with them. And then now I started now building in systems. I started pulling back, being able to, to knock off. Hmm. You know, being able to travel. Back then, we'd be traveling. I would still be talking to the shop. No, do this, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't really enjoy that. Yeah. So back then, then I started now pulling back and allowing them to to do it. Okay. And so that was. So from 2013 until now, mm. you've been a John Maxwell coach. Yes, I am a, a John Maxwell certified coach, but I also then developed myself in other modalities. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I realized that apart from learning what uh, I was being taught, I had a gift mm -hmm. of, of just helping people to, to, to change their lives. Mm -hmm. So that took me into the transformational space. So it wasn't just you reinventing yourself, you're helping other people reinvent themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I realized that I was helping other people reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided then now to, to really pursue this. Mm -hmm. So it took me into the transformational space. So apart from just leadership, then I started looking into really why mm. are we behaving the way that we are apart from this up? guy who the prison guy who you obviously helped can you give one or two examples of individuals maybe even without mentioning names who you helped to transform and how you went about it okay yeah it's, it's, it's very interesting because when i <laughs> helped Meta, i had actually started at home so I had a younger sibling uh, when I was at, a younger sibling. Uh, he passed on. Uh, he sorry. passed on in in 2007 in, in a road accident. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I went to university, he was actually the third. I'm the second born. That he was the fourth child in our family. Yeah, mm -hmm. in our family. So 
I was at university and he failed at, at junior secondary school. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't continue. So that year when he was just idling around, there were so many reports, no, Kahensa is stealing people's things, he's doing that. And at that time, I, w I just told my, my parents, my mother, that you know what, this child is too young to be out there on the street and not doing anything. Mm. Uh, because otherwise that's what he's going to do as a mode of, of, of survival. And coming from a, you know, a, a humble background, it means no one was really seeing what needs to be done. And as the second born and the first one to go to university, I could see that uh, he still had potential. So I wanted him to go back to school, but I couldn't do much. So the, my, my stepfather, who is actually the father, he's not my father. So mm. I approached him and said that, you know what, uh, I think Yahenza needs to go back to school. So if you can sponsor him. And he said, no. He, he, he is a builder, so he said, no, Kansa doesn't need to go to school. He needs to just join me and start building. Mm. And Kansa said, no, no, I don't want to build. Mm. I don't want to be a builder. I don't want to do any of those. Mm. So what I did, I was still at university. So I asked uh, a cousin of mine, he was in Molepolole too, for accommodation. I said, you know what, can you accommodate? I was a TS in, in Mukhoditani, so our mm -hmm. orientation was in Molepolo, was mm -hmm. in Molepololi. At the time. At the time. Mm -hmm. So when we were there, at the, 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 the at the orientation, I could see that there was a trust across and there was a, a there was an evening school mm -hmm. where we were. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's what I thought, okay, if Dineo is in Molepolole, then uh, Gahenze can go to that night school. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, if you can give him accommodation and food, mm -hmm. I will use my allowance at university to pay for his for his school fees. Mm -hmm. So Dineo is late, uh, may his rest in peace, yeah. agreed, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then Gahenze moved to Mulepolule, and then by the end of the year, his performance was really so bad mm -hmm. because he couldn't get support because it, during the day he was alone at home. My cousin was at work. Mm. At How night. How old was he? Yeah. Who? Uh, the, the, the one who couldn't get support. What age was he? Was he? I think, oh, when, when do we finish form two? I think it was around, okay, 12, 13. I think it was around 13, 14, okay, 14 so 15. Sure. Yeah, yeah, teenager. So yeah, he was, he was a teenager. Mm. Yeah, he was a teenager because he failed form two mm. and then he couldn't move to form three. So yeah. he had a year of doing nothing. And then the following year, I put him back into, into mm. school. So I had to come up with another plan. I said, no, this is not working. And uh, so I, I, I found a, a day, like a study, a study center mm -hmm. uh, in Kaburun. It was just opposite uh, what used to be Grand Palm, mm -hmm. which is now Avani. Yes. Which is now Avani there. So I found that, okay, this, is, this one is a, is a day uh, s s study group, so mm. he can go there. So I went there, asked how much, and he said, okay, mm. I can afford to pay it with my allowance, mm. but now I need accommodation. Mm. So I approached my, uh, my uncle and the wife, they stayed in Khaboroni, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just behind Princess Marina there. Mm. So I, I go, went back to them and told them, okay, this is what I had done, mm -hmm. and it's not working. So I want to move him to a day school so mm -hmm. that I can support him while I'm at university. So yeah. yeah. So if you can give him accommodation and the food for me, I'll take care of the, mm, yeah, <laughs> of, that's the great. of the school fees. Mm, mm. So that's what I did with him. And, uh, and how did it turn out eventually? Yeah, he, he, you know, because he, he wasn't an A student, but he finished that Form 5. Mm. Uh, and then when he finished, I, I sent him back home. Mm -hmm. And he went and did, uh, you know, painting and decorating at, at, so at the technical college. So did he eventually start his own own business no he didn't start his own business but yeah but that's what he did he painted and for people and did okay. that yeah but then when i went back to my own to start uh, my business mm. then he came to now he's the one who was help who helped me wow. in the business wow. and even when he passed on he was uh, working with he you. was working with me oh that's a he very good story with, yeah All so right. so so that was the first part that i realized that okay this is what i can do mm. but but after meta i've actually now helped people uh, do that. The first person that I helped before I even certified as a coach uh, is, 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 is she's no Mabutu. Mm -hmm. uh, she was actually our, she worked at our company secretaries. Mm. So I connected with her while I was just going there and realized that she had potential. So this is really some form of mentorship as well that yeah. you're doing. Yeah, so, so for her it was actually mentorship because then I encouraged her, I said, you know what, you can do this mm. for yourself. She didn't have that self-belief in mm. herself that she could do it. But I asked her, I said, if you are the one doing it here, mm. 
in this company? Why can't you be doing it for yourself? Yeah. So I supported her uh, and she eventually started her own. Okay. Yeah. Her, That's her. great. Um, so you have tips, specific tips for guiding professionals or executives who want to transition from their, you know, eight to five, if you like, to, yeah. to entrepreneurship. What, what are your tips? Um, what, what specific tips can you share? Yeah, uh, I do have uh, some tips that I will share, but I think before I get into that, is, is, is to, to just realize that from the path that I took, mm. I learned a, a number of lessons from how I quit and transitioned from my mm -hmm. academic uh, into, into, into entrepreneurship. Mm. And when I look back, I said, okay, I learned, I took a longer route, and uh, in some instances, I learned the hard way. Mm. But now, in hindsight, I realize that it can actually be shortened and it can mm. be with less, you know, uh, mm. less, less drama mm. and, <laughs> and a lot of those. Yeah, less stress. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and less threat. Mm. So, so, so my, my transformational journey really showed me that uh, one of the things that we, we have, we have uh, lost touch of is being able to tap into our inner wisdom. You know, what the convention, the way we have been raised, the way we have been told to do everything from your growing up, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Until when we finish at university, now you are on your own mm. and you are operating in that default mentality mode. Yeah. mode. Mm. But then life doesn't operate that way. You need to make decisions, you need to make uh, choices. Mm. And it's to really see how, how do we then reconnect with who we are mm. at core and how we have been designed mm. so that we are able to take responsibility of our lives and the decisions that we want to make. Mm. And that is the same approach that I recommend that when someone wants to transition and quit their job to maybe become an entrepreneur or start, a, or maybe quit this job and do another job, mm. is to really start by going within and deciding uh, who am I, how am I wired, what it is that I want to do, what gives me joy, what fulfills me, what comes easily and natural for me, so that I'm not grinding against uh, against the current, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. So, so really, it's to be able to develop yourself so that you are you, you do that. But first, is to is to to connect with who you are at core. So find what it is that I would want to. And do. Is that a process? How do you go about yeah, really it's, reconnecting? It's, yes, it's, it's, it's actually a process. Mm. It's actually a process uh, uh, that I take people through. Uh, first, first of all, is to really I, I normally say. Uh, you know, purpose is a word that has been so widely used, like life purpose and everything else. But it takes us to our purpose is really our being, who we are and what we are designed uh, to be mm -hmm. and to do. I think is 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 one thing that our you know culture and condition has overridden that mm. that we all wanted to look the same, we all wanted to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But each and every one of us is unique. You know, there is a different slice of source or life that wants to be lived through you, and a purpose that only you can fulfill, given the gifts that you have, given the strength that you have, you know, all of that. So the starting point is to really connect and see. Before all this conditioning, before I was told you are not good enough, you can't do that. Mm. What it is that I felt alive at doing? That is in my DNA, that I cannot not do, that I do even if I don't want to do. So it's mm. really to tap into that. What it is that gives you that... Um, mm. That I've been so in that process, that you you, are, you what you have a series of questions yeah, or questionnaires. Definitely, or, yeah. Ah. It's, we, because with coaching, at the core of coaching is asking people questions. Mm. That is where coaching uh, separate with mentorship. Mm. When I work with clients, I do both because I have this vast experience. I do mentor, mm. but I am a coach first because I, I approach it believing that someone, everyone has their inner guidance that they can tap into. So once they are very clear from their inner guidance, then you can support them with external resources of say, okay, if this is what you, you feel called to do, you want to do, this is mm. how you can do it. So it's more of asking the questions to help connect mm. with someone from the heart and not from Yeah, my question was, was the tips in terms of these guiding principles. Yeah, so, 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 so the first thing mm. would be to help someone to, to really connect mm -hmm. uh, with their purpose, who are they, you know, at core. Mm -hmm. And then once they have done that, the second thing is to now then create a vision of how do I want to live this purpose? What are my values? You know, what, what do I value? What do I enjoy? And mm -hmm. then tap into, into that to create a vision for yourself. That is not like everyone else. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know, not copying what you are doing and wanting to do it because I see you making money or I see mm -hmm. you driving a Mercedes Benz, you mm. know, which is what most of us just tend to do, tend to do because that's how we have been conditioned mm. yeah. to, to do. So then with, the, with your purpose then comes your vision. And then from your vision, uh, what normally comes once you come up with this big vision is you start having all these stories, these voices saying, no, you can't do it. And even your, your family members say, no, you, you, th you think you can do it. They discourage you. Yeah, they discourage you. So now, that is where now you need to, you need to, to really go back into what it is that you can do and, 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 and push aside these other voice, all these voices mm. and find your truth. Because we all have our truth deep down what we know for sure. So it's mm. to go back to your truth mm. and you know, push around. I've heard people say true north, find your true north. Yes. Mm. So the, the, the purpose is like that true north. Mm. True north. But we all have our truth. Mm. You know, our truth is what we used to know before we were told, don't do it, don't do that. So mm. it's to really connect to your truth because if you are not connected to your truth, all these lies, we call it boga stories in coach. All these boga stories, boga stories. stories are going to stop you. Even that's if you a negative it. story. That's a negative They're story. They are boga stories. They are boga stories. I like that. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah. So once you find your truth, then mm. you are able to move forward. Mm. But then the next question is then how do you now start moving into your vision and, and, and living it? Because you, you live your purpose through your vision and the goals. Most people started goal setting. But that's not where you need to start mm. because then that's why we are scattered. We find ourselves scattered trying to do that goal. That so goal setting comes last. Goal oh. setting comes after you have a vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes. And a mission. Yeah, it mm -hmm. comes after. Yeah, it comes mm. after that. Mm. Then from from there now, you you get your fuel from your passion. What what is that you are passionate about? Mm. So your passion is what now will help you to drive this vision. Mm. And most people don't, they think they don't have any passion, but we all do. But we have silenced it, you know, when we went for, uh, you know, academics and everything else, we kind of pushed, pushed away. It aside. Yeah, all those things that we, the creativity that we had, the things that we love to do yeah. when we were young. So it's to go back and reconnect with those. Yeah. And then from there, the, the, the fifth step would now to be to create a plan of then how do I, you know, bring this vision to life? How do I incorporate this purpose, this passion that I have and everything into a plan? I'll get back to that I can execute. I'll get back to the coaching in a minute, but I'm a property investor, so yeah. I'm fascinated and obsessed with property. What are your property investments and what are your plans on that on that side of your serial entrepreneurship? Okay. Yeah, uh, like, like, like I mentioned, when, when I quit my job, one of the things that was at the forefront for me was, uh, was property, was mm. real estate, because I could see it as a way of uh, liberating me from having to work 24-7. Mm -hmm. So I actually did a lot after I quit my job because I wasn't employed, and I had this whole new awareness that most people didn't have at that time. Mm. I quit my job in 2003. So it meant I really... I uh, went after acquiring property, mostly land. Mm -hmm. So mostly I was able to acquire land that I didn't buy, mm -hmm. mostly land that I just went and identified it, applied, because I had plenty of time. Mm. So I would travel. When I had, okay, there is land there, so I would go there. Mm. Then I would go there. And so apply to the land board. Yeah, and apply to the land board. So a lot of uh, the property that we had was land that I, we actually applied. And then when we started making money, we started now buying even uh, now more land. Mm. And then we, we, we bought, like I mentioned about the, 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 the flats that we bought. Mm. And then we started now developing, uh, developing uh, some of those property. And it was very interesting. The first property that we developed is actually a four, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-residential with four bachelor pairs. Mm. I bought that plot for 3,000 pula when I came back from Canada in 2000. Mm. I borrowed that 3,000 from the Mozelloet University <laughs> and bought that. Mm. So we put four units. That was the first thing that we had. That was four, just four bachelor you know, pets, pets yeah. units. Mm. And then we continued to buy and build another multi-residential that has about seven units in mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then we went on, we have another land that we also have four, uh, they are single unit in it. Mm. And then from there, that's when now we went into the commercial. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 proper, the shop where I operated was our first commercial property. 
and then from there we built uh, the lodge it was also in our plot laha mm. hotel mm -hmm. so it became the other property that we developed and then we uh, built the the multi-choice way now multi-choice uh, that's house. that's a very iconic building very nice building the, the, yeah the one in the center yeah of the and then town. We, yeah and then we built that one in the in the center mm. in, in in the center of town mm. So we are still in the process of, of really into, into developing. So we have another lodge that is coming up. Mm. Uh, we bought, and it was an already existing one. It used to be called Marinas. Mm. It's just in Maui towards the Matapanian side. A there. lot of people are saying it's dangerous to buy lodges during COVID. What do you say about that? Uh, I, I don't know. We, we didn't buy it during COVID, but we just bought it on the onset of COVID. Mm -hmm. When that transaction uh, was completed, it was in January last year. Mm -hmm. And then February, March, then COVID just hit and everything went into a standstill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say they would say that, but if your whole purpose is not just about a lodge, mm -hmm. it's also because for us, we are coming from a place of property as well. Mm -hmm. So because it's, 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 it's a lodge, but it is property. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Meaning it can be adapted for it, other it uses. It can be adapted for other uses. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, for me, I'm looking at it like that, mm -hmm. that it can be adapted to others. So it's not just about Korea. In other words, in the event that we don't recover on the, on the hospitality side in terms of tourism, you can think of other uses like office or yeah you can whatever. yeah you can mm. think of other uses mm. like for me the, the easiest use that comes because i'm a retreat leader i host retreats mm. i host transformation it can become a retreat center mm -hmm. simple as that okay <laughs> yeah. yeah so 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 that could be done so so we do have quite a number of of our land that uh, we have plans to be to be to be developed i've previously had discussions with my previous guests over which is the best strategy. Some argue that it's better to buy and then flip to make a profit. And I've always argued it's, it's better to buy and hold. What is your strategy? Flipping versus buy and hold. And what do you think of each? Okay, I, I think both, I, I think it's, they both have their own places, mm. depending on what you are looking for and depending at your, in, in your priorities. Mm. I know some people are making uh, it big in, in, in selling. But uh, when, when you have a vision of what you want to accomplish, with, like for us initially, we wanted that passive income, you mm. know, uh, that could help us survive when we are not able to, to go to work, like when COVID hit mm. and people were not working, you mm. know. Mm. So everyone still needed a home. Yes, <laughs> roof over the head. Yeah. yeah, so because for us, we do have multi-residential and we also have the commercial. Mm. at the same time so it was a good balance that mm. Mm. Uh, most of the offices people who were for for commercial it was hit at the commercial side mm. but the residential was not that hit because people still needed a roof over their head mm. Mm. and people still got paid mm. most of most people were paid mm. you know, during covid so they could still pay their rent mm. so so really i think it, it has its place mm. and where we are right now we were still at a level where we were just uh developing to 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 lease out mm. but in the future we may look into seeing what it is that we can mm. dispose what can we what, mm. what can we sell mm -hmm. uh yeah on that because we, we like I, I mentioned for me it was property was there but i think property was there for me before i even became a, a business coach a, a coach yeah mm. a coach because i mm. owned my first property mm. when i was doing form four Oh, oh, that way back. Yeah. Mm. I owned my first property when I was doing first Form 4. And the second property when I finished from university, mm. just after I graduated. So really property is, is, in your, is in your DNA. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to coaching. Do you also coach on the real estate side? Or do you mentor real estate uh, uh, on real estate? Or is strictly... Uh, personal development as in transformation i think you are you are big on transformation and what's the other word that yeah I'm actually actually is 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 very interesting i'm big on reinvention yeah i'm big mm. on reinvention and transformation because once someone is transformed from the inside out mm. they are able to do anything that they want mm -hmm. so it's like is that lock mm. you know uh, yeah is that key that unlocks the potential so 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 what what i do right now is over the years, I've been doing both uh, corporates, uh, individuals, but uh, over the years, I've come, it's become very clear for me that 
I just want to work with, uh, with more with individuals than working with, uh, with corporates. corporates because I'm interested in transformation. Mm. Corporates are not interested in transformation. They would <laughs> trick you into thinking that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they are not. They yeah. are not. From your experience. From my experience, they are not. Mm. Uh, so I've realized that, okay, I want to just focus on this. So what I do uh, with a focus on people who want to transition out of their jobs mm. is I, I help them to define what they want, create their visions, and support them in their vision. Mm. So mostly is, 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 is you operating from that coaching is a tool that is used to unlock potential. So you don't need to, be, to know what someone is doing mm. to be able to help them. Mm. You just need to know how to ask them the right questions, how to see where they are getting stuck, where they are blocking themselves, and, and, and help them move into the next step. Because you, you do say that people, um, you have five steps to helping people design a unique blueprint. Mm. Do you want to share what those five steps, I know you've touched on some of them, yeah. but uh, because you said it led, it led to a lot of pressure and misalignment. Yeah. So, so can you help us sort of un unlock that um, conundrum, if you like, yeah. to explain the, those five steps? Yeah. So, so, so really, those five steps are, are, are needed to help someone design the life that they want mm. and move away from the default that we found ourselves in. Most of us were in default, either through the conventional path of going to school mm. or through being raised by parents who insisted, no, you need to be a lawyer, yeah. you need to be a teacher, you need to be a doctor. Mm. So it's to say, okay, fine, this is where I find myself in but I'm not going to throw a pity party and get stuck mm. in this route and start complaining. I'm now going to take responsibility and now design the life that I want. So it is like, it is a process that helps someone then design that. Mm. And once they've designed it, that's what I do is now I support them to now start bringing that so to life. So step number one? So step one is finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. Step two is creating a vision that is then aligned with that purpose. Mm -hmm. Uh, step three is, uh, is really tuning into what is holding you back. What are those stories? What is that conditioning that is holding you back? Mm -hmm. And then the fourth one is finding what it is that you are passionate about that would give you that fuel that you need to keep going. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth one is to now create a plan mm -hmm. that you can then follow. Okay. So now when coaching comes in is where now you need support to integrate all of these things mm -hmm. and to, to start doing and implementing it. Okay. Because we know so much, given left, but we are not implementing it. And left to our own devices, we think we still need to take more, read more, do this more. And then it's not. It's not then like we are not implementing or okay. integrating. As we conclude, um, what, what is the biggest mistake that you say you did in your personal, de in, in your developmental journey or in your entrepreneurship journey? And, and what, what would you say to people to avoid that mistake? Yeah, for, for me, I think, I think the biggest mistake, one of the mistakes that I, I, I feel it was a mistake is jumping ship, is quitting my job without clarity of what I wanted to do. So I, I, I survived it because I quit when I was young. I was relatively very young and I had a supportive a spouse mm. who was uh, running a business back then and I didn't have a lot of responsibilities. The but children had not arrived yet? No, I had my, my firstborn. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. when I quit my firstborn was a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was a year old, yeah. something like that. Yeah, so, 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 so that was the biggest mistake because I, I, I struggled, you know, where I, I used to, I've been independent for a very long time, then all of a sudden I don't have a salary. Mm. I had to depend, uh, you know, on my husband's salary. He paid the, the loan, the car loan. The only loan that I had was the car. But it's the car that I bought so that he could drive a car when he was a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now he had, we had another turn, one. To assist turn to carry yeah. the heavy load. <laughs> yeah. Then, so that was the first mistake. So I, nowadays, I don't recommend that my clients just wake up and say, no, I want to start this, and then they quit their job. So they should start the side hustle first. So, so they should start that business. I don't like the word hustle. Why? For me, hustle comes with trying to force things and working so hard and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it's, it's to, to start their business while they are still working, mm -hmm. uh, create an exit plan. So you don't plan. believe it's hard? 
I don't believe it comes with hustling. No, I think we make it hard mm -hmm. by trying all those stunts that I tried in the past. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, 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 to, it's, it's to start the job, you start the business while they are working, create an exit plan to replace at least their salary. Mm. If they, yeah, they have good responses, they are able to continue paying what they are paying and then quit. Mm. And then two is to get clarity on what mm. they want to do. Don't just wake up dreaming and then quit. Yeah. Because you're going to spend a lot of time trying a lot of other things, wasting time, wasting money, you know, mm. and scattering your thing. Maybe even thinking that you can do it and going back to your job. Okay. It's time yeah. for the crystal ball question. Serial entrepreneur, very successful, real estate, coaching and all this. Looking 5 to 10 years, 15 years or even beyond. What do you see? What are the plans? With that crystal ball of yours, what do you see? Okay, with, with the crystal ball, uh, what I see is I've already designed a vision that I want. Mm. I, I know, and I've I actually designed it way before COVID hit. Mm. I knew I wanted to be independent location, so work from any place in the world. Mm. And I started coaching virtually in 2016. Wow. So when COVID hit, just catapulted me into that future mm. so that is where i still i'm still seeing myself uh coaching uh doing the work that i'm doing uh virtually and i see myself helping uh other people mostly people who are into coaching and into mentor into mentor supporting those people who are helping other people mm -hmm. not just the the individual uh people and then i see myself uh more into into hospitality, you know, developing that side because I'm also passionate about that. Mm. So into into that real estate and, and doing that. Mm. Then a large part of me is health. I've always been a health freak. I lost it there with the entrepreneurship mm. <laughs> thing, but then once I regained what it... What do you mean you're a health freak? What does that mean exactly? Really, I think the right word is I'm a health enthusiast. Mm, enthusiast. So, enthusiast. So I, I, I believe that you can have a big vision and not take care of your health because your health is the driver. Mm -hmm. So you can dream and dream, but if your health does not afford you the liberty to, 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 to live that vision, it's useless. Mm. So what I, when I work with clients, we start working on their health first. Mm -hmm. So that's the foundation. You, mean so you, you prescribe vitamins and, and uh, health, you know, even uh, diets and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I don't prescribe vitamins. Health, health is not you know health, health is health mm -hmm. you know mm. uh, the way our bodies are designed they're designed to take care of themselves okay provided we take care of them mm -hmm. so that's it so for me it's about just going back to the basics okay of looking back or okay before there was no nandos before there was no chicken licking mm. before there was no palate what there what was no coke there was no coke <laughs> mm. how did we live our life how did our parents live before there was no gym and they had all these long lives they yeah. lived over 100 yes before there was no gym and everything so for me it's about natural health Mm -hmm. going back to the basic pressing reset mm -hmm. and this is where i utilize my background in biology mm -hmm. to just teach people this basic biology of like, how like walking eating yes, right walking eating know, right mental health yeah. mental health mm -hmm. meditating so that's for me okay. that's it okay now here's yeah. your chance Memma lecha hana lecha to ask me a question we did tell you that you get to ask me yeah. towards the end so for, for me the question that i've always been wondering was okay I am married to a lawyer. I know a lot of lawyers and uh, the, the work that they do, focusing on doing their work. But here I am, I'm seeing you. Uh, you, have, you have also, re I think I was interested in, in more because I've seen that you have reinvented yourself <laughs> many times. Yeah. So it's okay, what caused the reinvention? Because I know you are into real estate mm. and now you are doing uh, this mm. podcast mm. as well. So mm. really, why uh, the, the reinvention? What caused you to reinvent in this way? There's a multiple, multiple causes. One is personal development. You cannot really engage in personal development at the level that I was doing it. I was also reading the Kiyosakis of this world, um, the, you know, the, the Napoleon Hills of this world, and the Glassons of this world. All these books, you cannot read them and not change. And I, I, for nine concentrated months, I was also an Amway distributor like you. And during those months, they were subscribing these tapes, and I was listening to these tapes, driving all over the place. And I was already getting interested in real estate, so it served as fuel. So with me, uh, the journey was fueled by personal development, 
and the realization that the law itself and the legal profession is too inhibiting and too restrictive. Living with a spouse who's a lawyer, you attest to this, that your mindset is too or clapad, if you like. It's, it's restrictive, you only think in terms of legalistic terms. So I had to undergo a, some kind of brain transplant to think differently and to start thinking like people like you so that I can diversify and end up calling myself a serial entrepreneur like, like yourself. So it was um, personal development and the realization of the limitations in the law plus other factors which I can't, I need not get into now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is enough for now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. because yeah, because because I, I watched you, I've watched you from a distance and, and I could see, no, no, that's a lawyer and I could see she's not behaving like a lawyer. <laughs> so now I saw you been stepping into the human uh, you know, space into mentoring people. And yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. I could, I could connect, yeah. I could connect because I believe without reinvention, we get, we get stuck and we, we don't grow, and if we don't grow, we become unhappy. Mm, that's true. Yeah. That camera is yours. You're going to motivate someone. You're going to leave them with nice little summary nuggets, as it were, take away, and then you're also going to give them your contact details if they want to carry on this conversation. All right. Mm. OK. Uh, thank you very much for, for watching, uh, for listening. Like, like I mentioned, I, I believe in uh, our ability to create our own lives, to design our own lives the way that we want them, to live them in their own time. And that is something that we have actually been gifted with. It's only that I don't really use a lot of uh, God. I, I believe in source, in a higher power. I'm a spiritual, but in God. But I believe we have been born creators from the beginning. So we are co-creators. We come on this earth uh, predetermined uh, with uh, the ability to create. That is why when we are born, we can't talk, we can't do anything, we don't walk. But we learn everything. Once we land here, you know, uh, on earth, we, 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 we come pre, you know, predetermined uh, to do those things. We come knowing how to ride a bicycle. We have the ability, we just need to learn how to do it. So it's to use that creative ability that we have and then take it with your inner knowing. We also come with the most reliable compass within ourselves, which is our inner guidance. And once you use your, 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 your creative ability and your inner guidance together, and you are able to dare and, and step out of the, the normal, you know, disrupt uh, the status quo, then you can step into the possibilities that are available for you. So that's what I just want to leave you with. And once you now have a plan, like, uh, you know, the process that I share with those five steps, when you really now channel this creativity into a framework, that will allow you to design your life. Then you'll realize that the sky is not even the limit. There is no box. So you will break the box if a box is put in front of you and really design life in your own terms. And uh, if you want to continue this conversation, uh, you can uh, reach me at, uh, I have a website. It's called www.hanalecha.com. And if you really want to look at uh, this particular process that I'm talking about, I do hold uh, uh, workshops uh, and retreats on this, uh, you know, framework. So you can uh, go look at that at www.hanalecha.com slash BFS. www.hanalecha.com slash BFS. So that's where you will really connect with me in that platform. Thank, Thank you, you. Mama Hannah Lecha. Mm -hmm. Pass my regards to my learned friend, uh, Lawrence Lecha. Thank you for taking the time out. It was a privilege and an honor. You shared um, generously, and we most uh, certainly appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>